This video is all about credit spreads. How do you set them up? How do you manage them? How do you fix a credit spread that's gone against you? You asked for it, so here it is. Let's talk credit spreads. If you're new to option trading, at some point in doing your research, you're going to run across credit spreads. You're going to find that they give you the ability to trade options even if you have a smaller account. Or if you have a large account, they allow you to trade as if you had a much larger account than what you actually have. So it's important that if you're going to use them, that you use them properly and know how to deal with the situation where a credit spread goes against you. Let's dig into an example of a credit spread that we did several weeks ago and also talk through how to set up a new credit spread position, including where and how I like to place my short strike prices. Here you see the credit spread we did in Amazon. All in one trade, we sold the September 17th, 2950 put option and simultaneously bought the same expiration day, September 17th, 2650 put option. Thus, we were in a credit spread that was $300 wide per share. Since we did one contract, and each contract is equivalent to 100 shares, we had at risk $30,000 minus the option premium that we received up front in the amount of $9 per share. So we had at risk $29,100. Let's talk about why we picked these strike prices. Now keep in mind that we could have got a better return by selling this put option credit spread closer to Amazon's current price, but we wanted to give ourselves plenty of room to be wrong and still get a 100% win in this position. Because of that, we wanted to make sure that we had multiple support levels above the 29.50 short put option strike price that we had sold. The reason why I felt comfortable selling at this strike price is that first of all, notice that Amazon had just dropped four days earlier from 3,600 per share down to 3,300 per share. It had now started to slowly trend up. Since we know that gaps fill over 90% of the time, we knew that the gap that Amazon had made would serve as a magnet pulling the stock up. However, that gap, of course, is no guarantee that Amazon wouldn't continue to decline and fill the gap at a later day instead of during our desired time frame. So there are more reasons than just the gap that made us feel comfortable selling this put option credit spread. The next reason is this red to a moving average here. Moving averages, especially longer term moving averages, tend to serve as support, at least temporarily, for stocks. As you see here, this moving average was right around 3250. The next reason why we felt comfortable doing this put option credit spread at 29.50 is because Amazon had previously found support around 31.65, 31.23, and also solid support around $3,015. With all these various types and areas of support, we felt very comfortable selling this put option credit spread in Amazon. Besides, it offered us an awesome return. If we end up staying in this position until expiration, which is 44 days away, it would pay us a 25.7% annualized return on the $29,100 that we had at risk. But how should you go about managing a credit spread? I mean, the big problem with a credit spread is that as you can see here, if Amazon were to crash below our protective put option at the 2650 strike price, at that point, we'd be looking at $29,100 worth of loss. We, of course, absolutely do not want that to happen. So how do we manage this position to make sure that to the best of our ability, we don't allow that huge loss to happen? The way that I do it is to set up alerts. I had alerts set so if Amazon stock price reached certain levels that are pretty close to our short 29.50 strike put option, I would get an alert that would trigger me to adjust this position. If you're going to do credit spreads, I strongly encourage you to set those alerts. Here you see a list of just some of the alerts that we have set up in our Interactive Brokers account for positions that we're in right now. Let me just talk you through one of them. We're currently in a poor man's covered call position in Apple. As such, if Apple were to go up to 158 or higher, I will receive an alert that reminds me to roll the short call option portion of our poor man's covered call position up and out in time. We had done something similar with Amazon. We had set an alert so if Amazon declined down to around $3,100 per share, we would get an alert that would trigger us to adjust this position. Now we have actually exited this position for a nice profit, so I can't give you a play-by-play -play on how to adjust this exact position if it were to go against us. But we can simulate what would happen if we had been in a similar credit spread in Amazon that went against us. Obviously, even if we are wrong in this position and it went against us, we definitely do not want to lose all that money. So let's now talk about how to fix this credit spread if it had gone against us. This first one is my least favorite, and it's actually not what I consider a fix, but more of a way to end the pain. I'll keep it short and sweet, even though honestly, it's not that sweet. But I have to mention it because it is one of your choices. If a credit spread goes against you, and it looks like it may continue to get worse on you, and you can't fix it by the techniques I'm about to go through, then you might just want to close the position out. I know that's not ideal, but that is one of your choices. One of the next three techniques are probably what you're going to want to do. The next technique that you can use to fix a credit spread is my second most favorite. In my opinion, I prefer doing this one over the previous way, but it's still not my preferred go-to when I have to fix a credit spread. This technique involves doing a second credit spread, 
both the opposite option. For example, if we did a put credit spread initially, then we'd leave that one in place, but do a new call credit spread. An example of this might be that we sell a 35.50 call option, which should go for around $17.15 per share and simultaneously buy the 37.50 call option for about $2.43 per share. That'd put a net of $14.72 per share into our pocket. If you add that to the $9 per share that we initially got, then we'll be pocketing $23.72 per share. Our max potential loss will then be the difference between that $23.72 per share and either the $300 per share if Amazon were to go down or for to go up, we'll be risking $200 per share minus the option premium that we received. As I mentioned, this is not my preferred technique because as you can see now, we're really closing in our window of potential opportunity. You need Amazon to end up between $35.50 and your short put option strike price in order to hit your max profit. Anything beyond that and you risk losing money. And as you can see here, potentially big money. Now let me share with you my favorite way to go about fixing a credit spread that has gone against us. This third way of fixing a credit spread is my favorite so far. Let's say that several weeks ago on September 9th, we had entered a put option credit spread on Amazon. Let's say that we had sold the 3,300 put option and bought the 3,000 put option to protect us. So we had the same $300 per share at risk. And let's say that, for example, that we had received that same $9 per share. Let's also go with the same October 15th expiration day. That's now 22 days away, as you can see here. The problem is that Amazon is now only 2.8% away from being at the money on our short put option because it's trading for right around 3,400. Here is how I would go about adjusting this put credit spread at Amazon if it went against us like this one has. As you can see here, four days ago, this spread was actually at the money. Now, we don't want this thing to move against us in a big way and push us towards that $29,100 loss. So how can we adjust this position now to make sure that we're improving our odds of winning this position now that Amazon has dropped in price? Here you see that the $3,300 short put option is now trading for between $35.10 per share and $36.20 per share. So if we go in the middle, it's trading for $35.65 per share. The $3,000 put option that we bought to protect us is selling for right at $9.25 per share. So if we close this position out, it will cost us $26.40 per share. That would result in a net out-of-pocket loss of $17.40 per share if we didn't do anything about it. Let's see what we can do to adjust this position and prevent having to come out of pocket $17.40 per share, all while improving the odds of winning in this overall position. One thing we can do if we have the extra capital available will be to widen the distance between our two strike prices and roll them down. Now you see that we're looking at the November 19th option chain, which expires in 57 days. So that gives us an extra 35 days to win on this trade. Notice though that we're going from a spread of $300 per share wide to a spread of $470 per share wide. So instead of having 30,000 at risk, we have 47,000 at risk. You're probably beginning to see one of the big disadvantages of doing trades with credit spreads. When a position moves against you, it's very challenging to adjust it for a credit. But let's continue with this scenario. Let's say that we had the extra capital available to increase the amount of money that we had at risk. Notice that we would be able to sell the $3,020 put option for about $37.40 and it will cost us $9.80 per share to buy the $25.50 protected put. So the net that we put into our pocket will be $27.60 per share. If you back out the cost to close out the one that expires in 22 days, $26.40, that means that we would walk with $1.20 per share cash into our pocket for rolling this position down and out. This is not ideal, but it does allow us to put a little bit of cash into our pocket and it gives us an additional 8.5% that Amazon can move against us and we'll still get a 100% win with this position. If a position is going against you, it's usually better to fix it before it gets to your short put option strike price. If it goes below that, it gets harder and harder to adjust a credit spread without having to come out of pocket. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button and thank you so much for doing that. A fourth way that you can consider going about fixing a credit spread will be to do a combination of the last two techniques that I just mentioned. Depending on how far the stock has moved against your initial position, this might be your best strategy. For example, if you believe that Amazon was going to possibly continue going down, at that point, I would definitely feel comfortable selling a credit call spread and using some of that capital to roll the credit put spread down and out in time. You could even use some of that cash to narrow the distance between the short and long put option strike prices, thus decreasing how much you had at risk. Here's an example of that. Here you see that we have now sold the 3550 call and bought the 3750 call to protect it. And then down in the lower part of the chart, 
We've rolled the 3300 short put option down to 3020 and bought the 2550 put option to cover it. As a result, we've been able to give ourselves 8.5% more room to the downside. We've created a situation where we don't want Amazon to be above 3550 before expiration day. By using this technique, we've been able to pocket an additional $1.20 per share for rolling the put option credit spread down and out, and we've also pocketed $14.72 per share for selling the credit call spread. This technique would be best if you felt strongly that Amazon would not go above your $35.50 short call option strike price. That would mean that you had now turned this overall position from an initial bullish position and bullish view of the stock to a neutral one or maybe even a little bit of a bearish view of the stock. If you'd like to receive alerts when we sell options like the trade we did in Amazon that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down in the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how to go about fixing a losing option position, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled How to Fix a Losing Option Trade. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.